Coming up on Network Africa, UN chief visits Nigeria, holds talks with President Mohamedou Buhari. France calls Mali ending military deal unjustified. Plus, African Union condemns militants' attack on army base in Somalia. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Tenyo La Shubawale. We begin here in Nigeria where the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is meeting with President Mohamedou Buhari in Abuja. The meeting which is being held behind closed doors is part of his humanitarian visit to Nigeria. A major part of the discussions with the president includes the country's progress in the fight against terrorism impact of an increase in food and energy prices worsened by the conflict in Ukraine. Before his trip to the State House, Mr. Guterres visited the UN House, accompanied by some top UN officials and other diplomats to meet with staff, youths and women groups. He also laid a wreath in honor of the victims of the August 26, 2011 bomb attack that claimed at least 26 lives. <laughs> And still in West Africa, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, is urging stronger support for returning the displaced persons, refugees and host communities in Cameroon's far north region. The intercommunal conflict began last year after herders clashed with farmers and fishermen over dwindling water resources. UNHCR and partners say they are doing what they can to provide emergency assistance and create more durable solutions to mitigate further conflict and bring peace to the local communities. At least 100,000 people have been displaced internally or fled to neighboring countries. Some of the children go to the schools of the local community and they use the health centers of the local community which are insufficient. So we need to strengthen the local community so when these people go away this will remain as an investment, as a development investment. We have to support that reconciliation as well because without reconciliation and without reconstruction people will not go back and they will, it will become a protracted humanitarian problem. We have to avoid that. When we help this place, can we do it in a manner that is friendly to the environment? And here I have seen very good examples of this. I have seen um, uh, um, solar energy being used. We have planted, I have planted myself uh, trees in a small reforestation project. I think it's important that uh, we also, we the aid workers and the government think of even humanitarian assistance in green terms, in, uh, in environmental friendly ter terms. And it's a small project, but a great example to the rest of the world. <laughs> And back to the UN Secretary General's tour of West Africa, where he has visited Nigeria and Senegal. Its visit is significant, uh, seen as the region has experienced political instability with the overthrow of democratically elected governments and their military replacements. It also comes as the Russian war in Ukraine intensifies. This report compares the Secretary General's visit as against the region's challenges and demands. The UN Secretary General visits Nigeria, his last stop, in a planned three-legged West Africa tour, days before he had been in Turkey, Russia and in Ukraine, where the Russian invasion has caused death and destruction, despite diplomatic and military efforts at ending a war many see as Russia's excuse for taking over the country. During his visit to Senegal, his first stop in West Africa, Mr. Guterres reiterated his thoughts on the war in Ukraine and its impact on Africa. 
It described the war as a human tragedy which can have a dramatic impact on economies, in particular those in developing countries. He spoke about a triple crisis that exists in Africa, food, energy and finance, as a result of the war in Ukraine, saying the invasion was producing an alarming effect on a world economy already battered by COVID-19 and climate change. Before the Secretary General's visit to West Africa, the region had experienced a series of military coups over the past three years, heightening fears of political instability. Twice in Mali, once in Niger, once in Guinea, once in Burkina Faso and in Chad, regional body ECOWAS's attempts at reasoning with the junta on a transition to democratic rule have yet to make any gains. As for continued support or effort to deal with our own what whatever they can do to help us in managing in dealing with our internal security challenges which of course has implications on uh, uh, um, the, well humanitarian issues food food issues and so on we have a lot of uh, internally displaced persons um, and we would definitely need a, need some commitment from the UN on how to manage this uh, the challenges of uh, internal and internally displaced persons. While the African Union and the United Nations had condemned the coups, there has yet been any efforts made towards democratic governance there. Mr. Guterres' trip to the region boycotts these states, instead continuing to Niger and Nigeria, where the fight against terror, insurgency and banditry rages on. I think that the UN Secretary General visit would at the end of the day uh, would just try to reassure many countries, especially in West Africa, uh, that issues of security or uh, insecurity is important. So countries that uh, are doing things that might undermine their internal security would be would, would take heed and uh, begin to think uh, twice on, on uh, well, think seriously on how to manage these issues so that at least some of the challenges that lead to insect that come and uh, the outcomes of insecurity would be would be ameliorated at the at the onset. In Niger, he raised his call for more resources to tackle the problems, saying that peace, stability and prosperity in the country and across the Sahel remains an absolute priority for the United Nations. The UN says insecurity in Niger is being driven by a number of different actors and just one part of what the Secretary General called a multidimensional crisis of an extraordinary scale. African leaders have called for better representation at the UN via a permanent seat at the Security Council. But reforms are yet to be made. And while it is not likely long called for reforms at the UN may happen anytime soon, expectations are high, his visit to West Africa will cause him to see and understand the importance and value of the continent on the world stage. And now France has responded to Mali's decision to end its military cooperation agreement with the country, describing it as unjustified. Earlier, Mali's military government said it was breaking off all defense agreements and cited multiple violations by French troops and noted a profound worsening of the military cooperation with France. France says it considered that the decision is unjustified and absolutely contests any violation of the bilateral legal framework. France had already been pulling out uh, troops out of the country in the wake of two recent military takeovers. And to the situation in Somalia, the African Union chairperson Musa Faki Mohamed has condemned an attack by al-Shabaab militants on a military base in the country manned by Burundian soldiers. It's unclear the number of casualties suffered in the attack on the base, which is some 130 kilometers northeast of the capital Mogadishu. But al-Shabaab militants say more than 170 soldiers were killed and that they have taken complete control of the AU base. In a statement, Mr. Faki he says the attack will not lessen the determination of the AU's force in Somalia. He called on the international community to increase support to the Somali security services and the AU mission.
The VOA's Mohammed Sheikh Noor is in Mogadishu. He joins us now on the program for more on this. Mohammed, what more information are you getting about this attack at this time and also in terms of the casualty figure? Well, uh, the situation right now is very calm uh, after uh, uh, yesterday's attack on, on AU uh, army at his uh, forces uh, camp uh, were attacked by the militants al-Shabaab. And this came when the militants al-Shabaab uh, induced uh, actually uh, in the, initially three vehicles loaded with explosives uh, to uh, blow up the camp. Uh, according to uh, officials uh, on the ground, especially the spokesperson of the Hirshabelle uh, police, told me that the militants initially actually uh, ran over the base of Atmis, but that they were repulsed by air support, including helicopter gunfire, uh, which also caused heavy uh, casualties to uh, Al Shabaab fighters to attack the base. Uh, and the attack came as the country is in transition, uh, triggered by political quarreling uh, due to delayed elections that have diverted attention from al Shabaab threat. But uh, it's expected to elect a new leader by the end of this month. Uh, according to uh, Dini, the spokesman of the uh, police, uh, Hirshabel, uh, he told me that uh, uh, the police have only confirmed uh, the casualties of the civilian is uh, uh, wounded or killed in the attack. And he told me he confirmed that only six civilians uh, were killed and 25 others also were wounded. Okay, and help us understand also the, the situation now. Al-Shabaab militants claim um, to have taken complete control of the AU base. Is this the case? Yes, according to officials on the ground, Al Shabaab basically ran over uh, the base briefly uh, before uh, Atmis uh, forces uh, received uh, uh, reinforcement from the air. Uh, and of course, uh, this is not the first time uh, the Al Shabaab attacked this area. Uh, a base is managed by, uh, of course, uh, Atmis, from, uh, Atmis tropics. Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, this isn't the first time uh, AU force in Mogadishu has come under attack. Are there fears this could impact the forces' operations in the country going forward? Well, uh, this is not, uh, as you put it, the it's not the first attack carried out by the Shabab. Uh, similar attacks, of course, have also occurred in El, uh, El Adi village. Uh, in 2016, where more than 100 Kenyan soldiers uh, were uh, serving under Amistom were killed. And just a year before that, in 2015, uh, Al Shabaab also attacked a level village located uh, just 100 kilometers from Mogadishu, uh, where they uh, attacked also a forward operating base run by Amistom, Ugandan contingent, and killed 50 soldiers. But according to Hussein Maalim, uh, the director of Iral think tank security that is based in Mogadishu, uh, Al Shabaab wanted uh, to show uh, this time how disorganized the mission was with this incident. With this incident, as he put it, uh, this attack will go down in history as the first since Admission uh, changed its name. All right, then, VOA's Mohammed Sheikh Noor, thank you so much for the update and do stay safe. Thank you. And still to come on the program. Senegal's president, Macky Sall, says he plans to regulate social media. More details in a moment. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Still in East Africa, one of Kenya's most popular rappers is requiring voter registration cards to get into his concerts in a bid to excite voters about this August election. But it's not working. Kenya has been one of the region's most vibrant democracies, but voters are downcast by years of broken campaign pledges and corruption scandals. <laughs> Octopizo, one of Kenya's hottest artists, rapped about the celebrity high life at a concert in the western Kenyan city of Eldoret. 
The event was part of his Ume Chukwa campaign aimed at convincing young people to vote in August elections that would choose a successor to outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta and thousands of local and national representatives. Valentine Ndalo, a 26-year-old performing artist who also performed, is an interested in the poll. I voted in the last elections since I had a voter's card, and the people who were elected have disappointed us. They did not help in any way, so this time I have not registered to vote, as I don't intend to vote, because it does not benefit me. Registration drives have so far netted only 2.5 million new voters, fewer than half of the 6 million targeted in one of the worst performances since the advent of multi-party democracy in 1992. The two main presidential candidates, Deputy President William Ruto and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, are veteran politicians from a system that enriches the wealthy, according to critics and many young people. Apathy may reduce the risk of election-related violence, which has blighted Kenya in the past. In 2007, the country saw clashes that left 1,300 people dead after disputed polls. But others fear there could be trouble and that the disenfranchised may revolt. Rapper Octopizo, legal name Henry Ohanga, grew up in the patchwork of rusted corrugated iron shacks of the giant Kibera slum in the capital of Nairobi. Giving them he sympathizes with voter frustration, but still pleads to people to vote. For us, it's giving them the understanding that this is the power, that the most power you'll ever have as a young person or as a registered voter, that you have a power to fire and hire. You know, and that's, that power is, has not been told to us. We just think, yeah, you go vote, you go home. They don't know, like, it's the biggest power you only have once every five years to choose uh, to move this direction, move this country in a different direction. Domestic worker Salmu Juma registered to vote outside the concert. I am glad that I made the decision to come and get registered. Everyone has a right to vote in whoever they want, hoping things will improve and become better. Right now, we have children going to school, yet the economy is a challenge. There are no jobs. If you get a job, you must value it and work diligently. I'm optimistic that the one we will vote in will help improve things, especially for low-income earners. But few of the 500-plus concert goers share their enthusiasm. Only 101 people registered. Many of them, you know, uh, seem not to be very much keen on participating in, in the elections. Uh, discussions we have with them, they, they tell us, you know, they don't see change in their lives, uh, you know, so there is no point of voting. You vote in the same people, you know. So there is that general voter apathy, which we have seen particularly in the, in the, in the youthful age, uh, who are supposed to be coming into the voting bracket. Voters say some apathy is down to uneven economic growth. The gap between Kenya's rich and poorest is one of the highest in Africa, government statistics show. We don't have time to go there and register as voters yet. We, that time we can use to hustle and get something. Instead of going there, we vote for them. They don't help us, they don't build anything, no infrastructures. East Africa's economic powerhouse has been one of the region's most vibrant democracies, but voters are disillusioned after years of broken promises, corruption scandals, and allegations of vote rigging. Meanwhile, Kenya has deployed thousands of police and other security forces to the volatile northern county of Masabit following an outbreak of ethnic violence. The government says drought, political incitement and the availability of weapons from neighboring Ethiopia are to blame for worsening insecurity in the border area. An overnight curfew has been introduced for the next month and a disarmament exercise is due to begin. Cattle rustling has increased significantly in Marsabit, which is one of the areas worst affected by a drought across the Horn of Africa.
And Senegal's president, Macky Sall, has announced plans to regulate social media in the West African nation, describing it as a real cancer of modern societies. Political tensions during local elections in January led to fears of widespread violence via online mobilization. This followed the case last year of main opposition leader, Usman Sonko, who was accused of rape. His arrest led to rare mass anti-government protests in which at least 13 people were killed and several others injured. A Nigeria's new landing ship tank, NNS Kada, is one port closer home as it makes its port call in Cape Town, South Africa, on her maiden voyage home. All of 100 meters long and eight floors high, the vessel, which was built in the United Arab Emirates, was handed over to the Nigerian Navy in March. Channel Television was at the harbor in Cape Town when the NNS Kada arrived. Nigeria's new London ship tank, the NNS Kada, arrived here in Cape Town, South Africa on the 3rd of May 2022 after similar port calls in Oman as well as Kenya's Mombasa port. There are also shuttle port calls in Angola as well as Gabon's port until ahead of its arrival in Nigeria. The commanding officer of the NNS Kada, Captain Reginald Adoki, and his vessel were received in Cape Town by Nigeria's High Commissioner to South Africa, Ambassador Mohammed Manta, and an area of top naval officials led by Rear Admiral Mondi Unriri, Flag Officer Commanding Naval Training Command, who led the delegation from Nigeria. This is a very huge ship, you can see. It's 100 meters long and uh, one of the few landing, landing vessels in, uh, uh, in this part of the world. I'm super proud because uh, about 2010 was when the Nigerian Navy decided she was going to recapitalize, recapitalize her um, fleet. And uh, just last year, I was at Las Palmas to receive NNS Lana, you know, the survey vessel. It means the dream and the vision that was conceived uh, about a decade ago in my lifetime, while staying in the Navy, is coming to pass. We joined the guided tour of the NNS Kada where we asked Captain Adoki what his vessel is all about and how the journey has been. This ship is a modification of the traditional uh, landing ship tanks, so meaning that it does more than what landing ship tanks do or did in the Second World War when LSEs were invented. So what it does is primarily is to carry out sea lifts of troops and equipment, but it has other secondary roles uh, by its design. And this is um, in the area of humanitarian and disaster relief operations. How has the journey been, including the voyage up to this? Well, it has been um, very exciting and challenging at the same time, I must say. Um, it has been a 56 or it's a 56 day voyage. Uh, so far, we have done uh, about half of that. Were you ever worried about the uh, pirates? Should pirates appear from any direction, we knew exactly what to do. And so, but somehow, luckily for them, throughout the journey, uh, we didn't have any case of pirates. We are also going to the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, it is not completely clear of pirates, so we expect in case it happens, we are also prepared for that. The NNS Kada leaves South Africa the weekend after a series of reception events in the host country. And after two further port calls in Angola and Gabon, is expected in Nigeria on the 27th of this month. From Cape Town, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenio Lashibuale. Bye for now.